Good evening Porsche fanatics and welcome to my channel uh, Porsche Minor Mechanics. Uh, welcome along. Uh, thanks for all those people that have recently subscribed and thank you for all your comments as well, especially regarding the most recent saga, the random PSM fault. Uh, right now I am going to bring you up to date with where I am. Uh, if you watched the previous video, uh, you will see that I tried a few test runs on a stretch of road. Uh, this PSM fault, I've been fortunate enough to suss out exactly when it occurs and what conditions uh, it occurs under. And generally it's around 30 miles an hour. The revs don't seem to make a huge amount of difference, but it seems to be more predominant around the 2000, 21, 22 mark. So third gear. 30 miles an hour, even a little bit under. And basically a straight line, very little steering wheel movement, which is what I'm being led to believe. Uh, and it will pop up. And basically nothing else comes up with it. Quite often with a PSM fault, you'll get PSM failure. And then underneath that or behind it will come up ABS or PASM or something like that. Uh, I get no other follow-up message with it, so it's purely just coming up PSM failure. In the meantime, um, you know, that video sort of showed us that I could make it happen, uh, and it was generally in a straight line. So I recently took the car out a couple of days ago, because I've been really busy with work these last few days, so I haven't done a lot. I took the car out a couple of evenings ago, and I decided to do the same sort of thing, but I did it a bit later in the day, so the road was very quiet. In fact, if I remember rightly, it was Sunday night I did it. Saturday night I did it. And I thought this time I'm going to do it uh, 10 mile an hour under. There was no traffic about whatsoever, so I was able to really do whatever speed I wanted to do and keep it there. So I did a couple of stretches of the road, probably talking about 1,000 yards, something like that. 1500 yards maybe a bit more uh, I tried it with I tried it in sports mode so stuck to me 30 miles an hour did it in sports mode uh, to see if that made any difference being suspension related PSM is safety um, Porsche safety mode if you like so suspension steering I'm just tying everything together saying to myself right well it's all responsible for safety so tried to test in PSM mode and it took a couple of goes, but sure enough, sorry, sports mode. And sure enough, the PSM fault came up. Then I tried it turning off the PSM. You know, you have your little button where you can turn PSM off. The fault still came up with PSM turned off. And then I went down the road, literally swerving it's a dual carriageway, like I say, there's nothing on the road at all, so I don't think I'm some sort of nutter. But I literally swerved 30 miles an hour from lane to lane. So basically giving that steering wheel plenty of work to do, not keeping it in the usual straight line. And lo and behold, it came up again. So I went in, I had my software with me, so I plugged the car in and I've got the iCar Soft. Uh, and it's pretty good stuff. It, it works all right. It's, you know, it's not doesn't do everything, but it's I've not really got any gripes with it. So I plugged it in, and I was able to calibrate for the first time the steering wheel sensor, and it came up steering wheel sensor calibration successful. Tried the tests again, and exactly the same thing happened. The PSM came up again every single time in all the various modes and at different speeds. As long as I maintain that speed. Uh, um, like I say, the positioning now of the steering wheel doesn't seem to make a blind bit of difference. But it does happen 99% of the time when I'm on the road driving normally, when I'm in a straight line, in traffic, creeping along, that's when it seems to go wrong. So that's basically where I'm at with that. So I've kind of, there's not a lot online, there's not a lot of reference to make anywhere really to towards the steering wheel sensor. Bearing in mind it's 15 years old, but that's the only thing I've got going against it. But what I decided to do tonight, I popped down a workshop for a couple of hours after work and I thought, right, that's it. I'm going to pull the, um, or I'm going to get a look at the steering wheel sensor. 
which I did. I removed the steering wheel. Uh, I will do a video for that. It wasn't as tricky as I thought it was going to be. No damage done. Uh, quite relatively easy. You literally pop a screwdriver up the back of the steering wheel and that enables you to pop the centerpiece out, which incorporates your airbag. And then after that, you need to just loosen the top and bottom casings, which are around your stalks and they free up nicely. You need some little fine tools to do it. But, and then I was able to access and withdraw the steering wheel sensor, which you are looking at now. You know, it's, uh, I believe there are a couple of types of these. There's one that works with an LED. Uh, it's basically a series of like LED lights or something that work. This one, I don't know if it's got LEDs in it. I have taken it apart because that's what I do. Uh, this one has sort of like the, I don't know if you can see, if you look here, it's got like the, elec the uh, electronic sort of band with the copper strips running through it. And basically what they do is they go round in the middle here uh, on a loop. And basically when, at the moment, this, this, is, this part is fixed to the car, this turns with the steering wheel. Now, when the button's pressed in, that's when the rest, of the, when it's fully assembled, this can go round either way many, many times. But inside it, uh, there's enough of this band, if you were, to allow it to unravel and connect again. It's quite greasy in there. Uh, I don't know whether it's supposed to have grease in it and I don't know if I can show you. Hang on, up close, let's have a look. You can't really, you can see it's quite yellow around here and that is some sort of oil or grease or something else in there. I did take the top cover off, but I've put, I've put it back together again now. Uh, and I have no intentions of refitting the car, but what I am going to do, you can see the, the, these are the spades off that tape that runs round it. And there's another set uh, over there where my finger is right now. What I plan to do is I, I'm going to test these in the fact for continuity, because obviously these are moving. This is a moving part in here. This, this band, you can just make it out there. You can see the copper rods there's what one two three four five i can see five there maybe six and they're moving backwards and forwards all the time so it's a very fine strip of copper on a tape that enables it to go around several revolutions for left hand and several revolutions back the other way these tapes can probably break one of those copper connections might not be as good as it should be i don't know but i'm going to test it and uh, we'll see how we do on that one in another video, but not tonight. So what I've now done is I have ordered a replacement one of those from Design 911. Um, it's a genuine part. If you want the part number, I can give you that now. It's uh, for Design 911, the part number is 955-652. 21112 uh, and it's £76.93 plus the VAT and, uh, and unless you're entitled you might get a 10-20% discount on that if you call them up because they have a club membership thing if you're a you know regular buyer from them etc and while I was at it I've also I've got the convertible the C4S I have if you're familiar with the convertible C4S they have the two rear quarter light windows don't know why I'm trying to shape a picture for you. Um, that they literally uh, the driver's window is here, and this these the back ones do that go down. They're like a quarter quarter light. They have a rubber seal bonded to them, which marries up with your driver's door, and they have a little felt strip on them. And mine's quite deteriorated. The rubber's fine, but the little felt bit has had a bit of wear. And me being the tart that I am, I've ordered a pair of those. Um, God knows how I'm going to fit those. I think I'll probably have to take the windows out to do it, but job for another day, we'll see. So that's where we're at with the PSM thing. I'm, like I say, I'm doing the steering wheel sensor just because I feel I need to. Uh, it's a very 
you know it's a moving part at the end of the day it's not an it's not totally electronic it's got a tape in there with copper wires running through it that are literally doing this all the single time all day long while you're driving i've got 76,000 miles on my car and it's 15 years old it's not going to last forever so and it's a relatively cheap part to be fair and pretty straightforward to fit i might add there's only one wire one connector which goes in that one there which is still in the car all the others self-locate into the housing as you slide this over the steering wheel the actual steering column so yeah not i thought it's going to take me ages to get it out and i thought it was going to be a real nightmare and i was a bit skeptical about doing it but i'm going to go for the replacement um, just to eliminate it from the inquiries um, and we'll go from there so that's it for now I uh, hope that's of some use to you I intend like I say I've not I've had this PSM fault for oh well over a year I've not really done a great deal to address it uh, back in the early days I had the stoplight switch fault come up uh, so I, the brake light pedal switch you know the one underneath that's really awkward to get to uh, I changed that and I thought because that, that's a PSM thing there's so many modules and departments within the cars ECU that just go directly to PSM uh, if there's ain't wrong with them PSM you know if your washing's not dry on the line PSM it, it's and it's very hard to um, distinguish between PSM and PASM faults they all seem to connect uh, one way or another and you can end up with a series of faults coming up from one department that can lead you astray and if you're not sort of careful you could end up throwing fortunes at your car before you if you do get it sorted uh, a lot of people have said to me about getting a durametric um, I've looked into those and they are what on face value i think they look quite an interesting bit of kit you know they do i'll say they do a lot more than the icar does uh, but bearing in mind on the icar i've got something like 20 different makes and models 20 different makes of car on my software um, and because uh, i use it for all kinds of things and i can i can get graphs up uh, active live waves and stuff like that on mine so all these things and more are possible with a durametric but for the money you're talking roughly what 300 quid just over 300 pounds uh, i couldn't i watched a video recently uh, on youtube uh, about the durametric and the guy was literally doing you know a bit of a review on it and i think he was out in the states i'm not quite sure but he could you can hire them out there whether you can here or not i don't know he hired one for 50 dollars and thought he'd give it a go he could hire it for that for 50 dollars for 10 days and he had a play with it and he said his a his view at the end of the day was that you know if if he was going to be doing something uh with it all the time or on lots of different cars etc etc then it'd probably be a good buy but just for you know a, pr a private diy purchase it's rather extravagant so I'm, I'm still out on it I'm not I've seen more I know they show up I've, I've heard a lot of reports with durametric where people are plugging their Porsches I don't know about other cars but they're plugging Porsches into a durametric and they're coming up with untold faults in all kinds of different departments things that they never even knew they had on their old software and yet their cars are running absolutely fine and the other issue with durametric as well that I've spotted is the fact that if you have a fault uh, let's say you've got steering wheel steering wheel angle sensor fault um, there is a little question mark in the band that the fault comes up on but you click on it it doesn't give you any information you know there's nothing there. I believe if you want to find out more you've got to go online uh, to the uh, durametric website whatever it is and so yeah I'm a little bit skeptical my i've got an icar soft like i say it owes me nothing i've got no loyalties towards them etc mine was about 175 pounds something like that's the icar soft porsche 2 i think it is 
that's the one with the F1 and F2 buttons in the top right and then you've got your thing in the middle quite a decent size screen I use it for all kinds of different cars and there's nothing on my Porsche that I've not been able to do it does ABS uh, it does airbags it does um, steering wheel alignment etc etc so that's where I'm at with it like I say I'm no professional uh, I bought it purely and simply originally for my own car and as time has gone on I've only had it about a year or two I think I bought it pretty much when the Porsche came on board and I've it, it came with the package came with a low, number of downloads downloads for different vehicles and like I say that's why I've got so many on it now whereas the Durometric if you buy the 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 novices version there's a novices version and a professional version you're only allowed three cars on it so three in, three different chassis numbers so once you've chosen your three that's it it's it's over you've got to start paying again so you know i don't know if you're in the business durametric's probably the way to go probably a faster find you know i think with the icar soft you need to have uh, a little bit of Oh, what's the word? A, a little bit of idea, a little bit of common sense about you. It's not if you're looking for something that's going you can plug in and it's going to tell you exactly what's wrong with your engine or whatever on your vehicle, then most of the software out there isn't going to do that. It's going to give you some ideas. And then if you're not careful, you can run away with them and uh, spend absolute fortunes so just be careful you need to i with this psm thing i've had it a year or so now like i say pretty much it happens pretty much soon after i got the car and now uh, we're only a year on i haven't actually spent any money on it directly trying to solve it other than i think 20 quid for a brake light switch and that was about eight ten months ago because I stripped the car down a lot over the last winter, uh, been through a lot of the sensors, a lot of connections, etc., etc., cleaned everything up, put it all back together again. I was kind of hoping it might have gone away, but it hasn't. So the steering angle sensor that I've just ordered, which I hope to have in a couple of days, is the first expense on trying to solve this ongoing fault. My concern is it might ultimately be something to do with one of the canvas. Uh, modules and they are the modules that basically harvest all the information from the various sensors so I'm hoping I'm gonna go down that route but this is a relatively cheap option to begin with and something that's likely to wear out because it's always spinning backwards and forwards all the time anyway I don't want to bore you a silly and it to tears anymore uh, thanks for watching a uh, few days time hopefully should be able to crack on with fitting that and give some more details on how I got the wheel off and put it back together again and obviously I'll have to recalibrate that the, the entire vehicle is currently powered down as well so uh, that'll be interesting because I've never left the battery disconnected on it for any length of time and it's gonna be two or three days at least before I get on it so I'm just wondering what can of worms that might just throw up at me when I try and connect it up and see what the system tells me then but then again, it might help clear a few cobwebs out of it if it has a total power down. I don't know. But anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the information so far. Like and subscribe if you can. Uh, thanks for your comments. Uh, some very interesting ones. Uh, another guy, I think it might have been, I can't remember his name now, uh, thought that maybe it might have something to do with ABS sensors or indeed uh, I had squeaky brakes, which I don't seem to have anymore only on the front it's a weird thing i don't know why they're doing it but when they're cold i get a little little, little like pad squeal but the minute they've warmed up they're as, as good as gold and of course the back as you know are all brand new anyway but yeah he seemed to think it was a possibility that maybe the abs sensors might be contributing to this fault again i replaced one abs sensor i basically did an, an ohm uh, an impedance test on them and basically I took, they're all pretty much on par, but I took the lowest reading as being the worst reading and replaced that one just because I bought one to do a test on a new one. So basically I bought the new uh, ABS sensor, did an impedance test on it, an ohm rating, 
and then took those figures and weighed them up against my other four that were on the car. And I had one that was slightly lower than the new one and the other three were virtually pretty much the same, give or take a few milliohms, whatever it was. So the one I, I've still kept it, but the one I thought to be the worst, I changed. But again, I'm not getting PSM full ABS coming up. Mine's more related to, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. If I knew, I wouldn't be sitting here. But still, we'll keep on going. Um, there's also another little module in that steering column uh, which is responsible for harbouring the information from your indicator stalks and your um, cruise control and the computer on there. But still, one thing at a time. And I'm also going to, when I put the new steering angle sensor on, I'm going to take the car in and get the wheel alignment checked uh, because that's another crucial one. I've never done that. Um, it's not a lot of money. And apparently Porsche, my car hasn't been tracked or raced around since I've owned it anyway. But uh, they are a bit notorious uh, for going out of line, apparently, especially if they've been run around a track or hammered, whatever. But anyway, enough. Thank you very much for watching. Um, look forward to hearing any comments you might think or any uh, ideas you might have. Uh, loads more coming up. Going to keep it strictly Porsche. Uh, like I say, we're still planning to go to Germany in August, although the list has now been released for countries we can go to. Germany isn't on it at the moment, but we're waiting to see. We'll go as long as I'm not quarantining when I come home or going in a hotel. If I've got to do that, I'll leave it. Can't be done with that. But fingers crossed, we get out there. Can't wait to get some drone footage and stuff like that. Thanks a lot, guys. Catch up with you soon. Thank you for watching. Paul Schmein Mechanics, signing off. Take care for now. Bye.